Hi there, Angela Fair here, and um, as is what I my usual custom, when I post a video, I love sharing with you something that I'm excited about from my recent paintings, something I've recently learned, um, a technique I've been trying that just has me all excited. And today I wanted to talk about painting evergreen trees. I love painting evergreens. They're a very common landmark in our northern northern region of British Columbia. Uh, we have pine trees, spruce trees, and uh, the larch or tamarack tree. And um, although those aren't really an evergreen, they lose their their needles every winter. But um, I love the contrast of an evergreen tree, the snow, and the barren trees um, of our aspen forests. And um, so I often add an evergreen tree when I'm painting a local landscape. Here I've got a row of evergreens um, in the background of this local painting. And uh, as you can see, I've used quite a dark green. It's almost a, a gray, navy kind of tone because they are off in the distance. They don't have a lot of color. And until recently, that was how I painted most of my evergreen trees. Um, dark greens, um, really dark, almost black shadows. And uh, that was pretty much the way I worked, variations of, of green. Um, this one here, this little evergreen, has... Um, Again, the dark greens, and this one I just painted a few weeks ago, and I started adding a little bit of red to it there, just being a little bit experimental. And um, and then last week I blew myself right out of the water with this evergreen here. And uh, I love this one, it's got color and life, and uh, you know, I strayed right away from my color palette, and I'm gonna show you what I used to make this um, vibrant, um, colorful evergreen tree. So let's work starting with a blank piece of paper. I've got my water at the side here and my palette over here. Paper towel in my hand as I usually do. I'm just gonna spritz my watercolor palette to kind of wake up the color. It's much faster to have wet or damp colors to, to work with than to try to revive, reconstitute a dry one. Bring my paper back. And I'm just going to choose a round brush that comes to a nice point. This is a Winsor & Newton Sable watercolor round and size 7. But whatever watercolor brush you're comfortable with, um, it's important to have a round. Um, over here on my palette I'm going to mix up, I've got some cobalt turquoise already in my palette. So I'm just going to start with that and just wake it up a little bit. And I also, right close to my cobalt turquoise right here, I have phthalo blue. It's a really bright, rich blue. Look at that. And then over beside it here, I've got some green. I've got a green gold. Just a tiny bit left, actually. I'll wake that up a little bit, too, and just swirl it around. I might want to use it. And um, way over here, I've got my reds. And I'm going to fiddle around with those a little bit because I'm going to want to use those in a bit, too. I've, this is a cadmium orange. Just uh, stroking it a little bit, waking up some of that color so that it's ready to be used. And this is a cadmium red. And those are your orange reds. Um, over here I have some pinky reds, a lizarin crimson, and this is a quinacridone magenta. I'm not going to use those for this particular painting, I don't think. So I'm just going to start with my cobalt turquoise and uh, start with the top of my tree and uh, paint some piney brushes. Um, and using my phthalo blue as well, I'm gonna add some color. It's pretty unorthodox to see a brilliant blue spruce tree, especially where we come from. Maybe it's different in your rare neck of the woods, but Use, this is not a common, this is not what I would originally think of when I was getting started in painting. Of course, um, I'm not going to paint all the individual needles. I'm just going to give it some nice abrupt edges. I'm going to let my water down here. I'm going to slide that off so you can see. I'm just going to leave this wet down here below so I can get some of that color to mix. And I'm going to grab some of my green gold because, you know, you got to have a little green in a spruce tree. Because my paint is wet, any color I put on here right now is just going to blend in and mix in a fabulous way. Now, 
that's nice and all, but I need some shadow. I need some contrast. You know how we make our contrast and shadow? We take the complement, the opposite color. What's the opposite of green? Red. What's the opposite of blue? Orange. So I'm going to take some of my cadmium red, and I've just got a little on my brush, and I'm going to work on my trunk. And because my paint is wet, I talked about those colors mixing. When two opposites mix, they start to make a gray. So I'm allowing those reds to mix with the green a little while it's wet. More cadmium red here. Okay, so now I've got some red in there. Let's try a little bit of the orange. You don't want to overdo it when you're taking these opposites because like I said, as it mixes, it's going to make gray. But um, at the same time, when you're using a complement, it makes the other color just pop. And now we want a little bit more, I think a few more darks. I can take some of that straight phthalo blue straight from the palette because that's when it's going to be the richest. Mostly paint and just a hair bit of water. And throw a little bit more of that phthalo in. Um, down here I want some shadow, some interesting color. Take some of that turquoise that we were messing with earlier. Maybe add a bit more water. And um, still feel like it needs something. Maybe a little bit more of that green gold. Almost out of it. I'm waiting for an empty space on my palette to fill up, to empty out, so I can make put it, add it to my permanent rotation. But I'm thinking I'm just going to have to evict one of my lesser used colors because this green gold it's from Daniel Smith and it's a marvelous color I just love using it it's gonna be my new I don't know there's certain colors you kind of overdose on you want to use them in everything all the time cobalt turquoise kind of does that too to me let's make a little mini um, spruce tree and just practice this technique this brilliant use of color Again, with the cobalt turquoise, I'm just going to put in a little guy. He's a little guy. My mom has a, has a real soft spot for a baby spruce tree. And she'll um, often find a wild one and transplant it, bring it home. Bring it home to love. Because those little ones in the ditches along the roadsides and such, they just get plowed up um, or mowed up in the summer. So it's... Uh, really a mission of mercy with her. Again the cadmium red and look how when I add it to that really dark saturated phthalo blue it really does look black and if I take water then on a clean brush and draw those colors out look how gray it is in spots there's a real gray right there but it also gives it a chance to lighten a bit I need to add more of that green gold to my palette. I'm really feeling short over here. So I'm not completely abandoning the use of green in my in my spruce tree, but I'm not going with the green, um, the hooker's green and the Payne's gray that I used to use. I'm adding some um, unconventional colors and uh, just kind of giving myself some freedom to just see what would happen if you added some of that some of that vibrant color where will it go and what will it do and uh, what I think I end up with is a much more vibrant um, painting something that's a little bit more interesting than plain old dark green so uh, I'd love to see you try it. I'd love to hear um, what colors you like using for, for your nature paintings, for your landscapes. Um, if there's an unconventional color combination that you try, um, send me an email. Tell me all about it. Um, my website is angelafair.com and uh, you can find me on Facebook, Angela Fair Artist.